Well, hey, good afternoon, everybody that is joining our webinar. A big thank you to the time that you've made. Uh, let me just start off by sharing a little bit about who's going to be presenting on today's session, who I am, and then we'll talk about a, an agenda here in just a couple minutes. So, yeah, so speaking as Jerry Van Dalen, I'm an account executive with Smarter Commerce. I'm going to be walking us through a, a couple of slides here before we transition over to the demo portion. Of our demonstration is going to be handled by Diego Fernandez, product manager of Smart Commerce, and then we're also joined by Fermin Rodriguez, managing director of Smart Commerce as well. And yeah, big big thank you to the crowd for joining us on this webinar, focusing on how to streamline JD Edwards payment operations with Smart Commerce. So just for a quick view of what our time together is going to look like, I'll spend just a few minutes talking about Smart Commerce as an organization. Then we'll transition over to an overview of Smart Commerce payments as a solution. Most of our time is going to be spent in the actual demonstration portion of the agenda. A quick note about questions and answers. Uh, certainly, we encourage all of the audience to let us know if you have any questions. The easiest way for you to do that, the preferred way for you to do that, is to go ahead and chat us uh, individually. You can chat me as, a, as, at the, as the administrator, uh, and then we'll be responding to you privately. And so again, if any questions come up based on the content that you're seeing, let us know. We'll also have some time towards to review any additional questions. So let's talk a little bit about who exactly Smarter Commerce is. Basically, Smarter Commerce is a, a consulting organization that's been around for close to 28 years. All 28 of those years, we have been dedicated to providing solutions for the JD Adverse community. In the early 2000s, we began a development of um, a series of products that today we brand as Smarter Commerce. Um, we also like to say that Smarter Commerce is a unified solution. We'll get into a little bit more about what that means in just a minute. Uh, but really, since the early 2000s, we've been focusing our skills, again, on helping the JD Edwards community uh, streamline their sales order channels uh, through, uh, through Smarter Commerce. We're based in South Florida, also have a, a, an office in San Jose, but we've got professionals working remote all across the U.S., and we are an Oracle Gold partner because of our close work with JD Edwards for so many years. Just a quick note here, You'll see on your screen a series of logos. Uh, these are all Smarter Commerce customers, all of them leveraging Smarter Commerce payments to different capacities. A couple of things I want to point out about this slide here. Number one, a couple of things I want to point out here. You'll note that all of the organizations here represent a broad range of industries. Uh, as well as a broad range of different size organizations, all using JD Edwards. Some of these are under a hundred annual revenue. Some of the organizations are over $25 billion in annual revenue. The key here is that Smarter Commerce has found a way to empower all of these organizations to streamline their payments specific to their scenarios. So regarding an overview of Smarter Commerce, I mentioned earlier that Smarter Commerce is a family of solutions, a unified commerce solution. What we mean by unified commerce is that regardless of whatever sales channel your customer is interacting with you, has the ability to provide them an outstanding customer experience through a consistent set of business processes and through one single source of the truth when it comes to business data. That single source of the truth is JD Edwards. It's at the center when it comes to pricing information, inventory information, customer information, customer history, so on and so forth. Today, we're going to be focusing our discussion on Smarter Commerce payments. Beyond that, we also have a retail point of sale solution for Customers that have retail operations that would like to present their users with a, a point of sale focused user interface. We also have an integration to the Avalara Avatax sales tax compliance platform. Obviously, our customer, our customers, many of our customers use Vertex and we fully support that as well. We just provide JD Edwards customers with an alternative. We also have a call center management solution as well as an e-commerce platform, which is a full B2B and B2C digital commerce platform with a real-time integration to JD Edwards key here, right? All, all smarter commerce solutions integrate with JD Edwards Enterprise One on a real-time basis. Now, if we're focusing our discussion on our payments solution, let's just talk a little bit more about that. Over the years, smarter commerce payments has matured to not only include all major credit card types, but also uh, alternative payment types, whether you're talking about Apple Pay or Google Pay slash Android Pay, uh, you know, in addition to other payment types, we support ACH, bank 
transfers in the US as well as EFT in Canada. And over the years, we've also grown our network of gateways and partners to support a broad range of different pricing or rather credit card scenarios that customers are looking to achieve. You know, we talked about initially streamlining our payments, right? Or streamlining payments and how Smarter Commerce can do that. Smarter Commerce payments really brings a family of functionality and capabilities to the table that JD Edwards organization lies to streamline their entire credit card and payment operations. Uh, whether this includes a standard credit card order at the sales order level, if this is a customer who wants to log on to a portal and make a payment on an invoice, Maybe your organization is using payment terminals, the actual chip and pin devices at a warehouse or a branch, and they'd like to integrate that with JD Edwards. Smarter Commerce supports all of these different scenarios. And obviously, a big point here in the conversation around payments and credit card security is PCI standards and PCI compliance. Smarter Commerce has been architected from the ground up to be PCI compliant and provide the maximum amount of security asked for by the industry. To just kind of focus on a couple of these uh, before we transition to the demo, Smarter Commerce payments or the traditional what we call payment processing is really a native JD Edwards application that sits alongside the P4210 or P42101. Those are the sales order forms uh, and allows your customer service representative to complete a sales order transaction using a credit card for authorization. Uh, the same can be said for an invoice payment. Uh, obviously, at that point, you would be collecting on the funds immediately. There's no authorization. A key point here is that Smarter Commerce tokenizes all credit card information. There's no sensitive cardholder information that is stored within JD Edwards. That's stored in a secure location at the payment gateway level. Our Smarter Commerce cloud offering provides all of the necessary hardware to be able to run the Smarter Commerce Payments application. This means that your organization can install, implement, configure, and run Smarter Commerce Payments with minimal physical footprint in your network. Additionally, uh, we have what we call our Smart Commerce ePayments uh, solution, which is a customer invoice payment portal. And it's essentially an online extension of the payment capabilities that we offer within JD Edwards. Abilities such as your customers able to log on to this portal with some credentials, uh, view invoices, download invoices. They can look at their order history. They can select uh, a couple of open invoices and make full or partial payments using credit card or ACH or PayPal. Your customers can even set up auto pay a functionality to make payments automatically for them into the future. Customers are also able to view account summary information like how many invoices they Ending, what's the balance of these invoices, uh, and perhaps how much credit they have on their account still open. Additionally, we've got some customers in the real estate industry who have actually taken the e-payments uh, portal, the invoice payment portal, and extended it to uh, as an offering to their tenants so that tenants can log in and pay, uh, and pay their invoices, their rent, using portal functionality. And then last but not least, to dive into a little bit more about payment terminal integration to JD Edwards. That's, that's pretty much this chip and pin device here. I think pretty much everyone on the webinar is familiar with this. We use it every time we go to Target or every time we go to Walgreens and we got to make a payment. It's a chip and pin device, right? The payment terminal. A lot of JD Edwards customers are using this kind of a terminal in some sort of a branch or warehouse situation when a customer wants to make a credit card payment uh, with and has the card with them. What Smarter Commerce does is that it integrates these payment the JD Edwards sales order process so that you don't have to reconcile those two uh, lists of transactions, if you will. Those are integrated uh, from the moment that that order is placed. And again, makes your reconciliation process a whole lot easier from a general ledger standpoint. Um, it's a big deal for accounting departments. So we'll be seeing some of that in today's demonstration as well. Obviously, the terminals that our team supports are all chip and pin uh, compliant uh, and uh, very much secure present transactions. So with that said, I'll go ahead and pause for a minute. Um, we'll transition now to a demonstration. Uh, we're gonna, let me just lay the groundwork for what we hope to see in the next few minutes. Uh, Diego Fernandez is gonna be working in a JD Edwards Enterprise One demo environment, probably very familiar to most of the attendees today. And we'll be seeing a couple of different scenarios with Smarter Commerce payments. We'll be seeing a sales order, uh, checkout process using the credit card, payment terminal integration, what is that? 
device look like when it's integrated to JD Edwards. We also are going to walk through an AR collections process, meaning an AR officer calling and collecting on an invoice using a card not present uh, transaction. And then we're also going to be walking through the actual e-payments portal, which is that uh, online portal where customers can log in, view, and pay invoices. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing for a minute. As we transition, I want to pause for a second and encourage the audience. Hey, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and chat us uh, and we'll be answering those throughout the webinar uh, privately. So uh, Diego, with that said, we're looking at your screen and uh, we're looking at your uh, JD Edwards screen here. Thank you very much, Jerry. And well, good afternoon or good morning to everyone on the call. Uh, as Jerry mentioned, I've gone ahead and shared my demonstration environment. This is a JD Edwards Enterprise One 9.2 environment. And for this first scenario, I'm gonna be walking through a standard sales order entry application uh, within JD Edwards. Uh, assuming that I have the customer on the phone and they're placing an order into our call center or with a salesperson. So for this demonstration, I'll begin with the P42101 application sales order entry, uh, entering in the information uh, within the sales order header that is associated to, uh, the, to this order. And we'll go ahead and uh, enter that. And then I'll uh, move into the second step, which is entering the products that the customer is desiring to purchase, whatever that is. And once I've completed that, then typically I'm pressing either the submit and enter new or submit and close. Either of these buttons, knowing that this customer is a credit card customer or that desires to pay with a credit card, uh, will drive them to a, a, a application that is delivered with our solution uh, as as uh, some of our customers on this call already aware of. So there's many uh, capabilities here that I'll just quickly highlight. Uh, you see over to the, to the left, uh, the customer number that is associated to this order, the order number over on the top right. Uh, below the customer number, you have address information. This is if you desire to do address verification of the billing address associated to the credit card. Uh, we also have the capability of storing credit cards on file if you so uh, uh, desire to do that, the actual credit card is stored at the payment gateway. No credit card information at all is ever stored within your JD Edwards environment, but rather the token, the vault token provided by uh, the payment gateway is what is stored within JD Edwards uh, for a reference purpose. Over to the left, you see a running total of our uh, order, including uh, products, any sales tax or freight associated to this order and the order total that I, I'm desiring to authorize on this transaction. Uh, we also have capabilities that for this customer I have turned off, but it's what's called credit card surcharge. This is the ability to recover a percentage of the fees or, or uh, your processor fees that you're charging, uh, being charged by your merchant bank. Uh, there are specific regulations uh, uh, regarding this that obviously uh, you would configure and depending on that, then you would pass through those charges uh, to your customer to recover those processor fees as part of the solution. Once I have the total amount to be authorized, in this case, 434.50, uh, I have different ways of authorizing that credit card. I can either authorize with a credit card currently on file using selecting the token and processing an authorization. I can uh, authorize with a brand new card. Uh, this is a customer that maybe is calling in for the first time or maybe does not have any cards on file. Uh, they would take this option, which will drive your salesperson or CSR out to the uh, uh, payment processing console, which is hosted by uh, Smarter Commerce and or uh, uh, PayFlow or PayPal so that you uh, your user that's entering any of the credit card information is never entering any of this information uh, within JD Edwards or through your JD Edwards network, but rather through a hosted payment page functionality. And it's here uh, where uh, your CSR or salesperson would type in the information provided by the customer over the phone, their card number, their obviously name on card, uh, that has been provided here. I'm using a MasterCard as a test card, the expiration date associated to that card and the card security code. This is that CVV2 code uh, that is found in either the front or back of the card. 
uh, your CSR would then click apply, which would validate the information and authorize the funds, uh, as in this case, the order number uh, and the order of 434.50. And if everything is successful, we'll come back with a successful processing message. As you're aware, uh, for those of you that are customers on the call, if there's ever a, a decline, it will also disclose here the specific decline or, or the error message provided back by the, the merchant bank and the processor. Once completed and I have a successor authorization, I can then return to JD Edwards and return or update the token information that is provided back by the payment gateway so I can go ahead and complete this order. And that's how simple it is to enter a sales order, enter the credit card information, authorize funds on that order, and then wait uh, to then ship that product, uh, uh, settle the funds against what's been shipped, and then post all of that information into your JD Edwards accounting. Uh, before I move on and save this order, I just wanna discuss a, another a capability here that we call authorized by message. Uh, this capability allows you to authorize an order, but the customer themselves and not your CSR or salesperson uh, would enter uh, the credit card information. How is this done? Well, if, they, if your CSR or um, customer takes this option, they would then select the email associated to that uh, customer or enter the email or phone number that they wanna receive a text at. And once they um, uh, have that, they will receive an email uh, similar to this, where it would have your logo and branding, your verbiage as to what you want to explain here. Uh, they would see their order number, the amount that is pending authorization, and they would go ahead and click this pay now button. And so the customer via their telephone or uh, their desktop or uh, via a text message that they receive, they would click on that and they would be driven to the payment portal, again, hosted by uh, Smarter Commerce and, and the payment gateway. And it's here where your customers can review their order information, review the details on their order. And if they're happy, they would go ahead and make payment and process payment against that order, completing the order and uh, uh, moving the order along to be able to be picked, packed and uh, shipped. So this gives you a capability to completely uh, move the entry of credit card information directly into the hands of your customer. So that if you do not want your CSRs or salespersons hearing credit card information or entering any uh, credit card information themselves, uh, you can apply this functionality uh, directly uh, as part of your solution. So as you can see, very simple for the customer, they go ahead and enter their credit card information themselves. They would click on process payment. They would be thanked uh, for submitting their payment and then the order uh, can continue. And as part of this solution, they also would receive an email confirmation uh, similar to this, letting them know that their credit card has been authorized. And this is their authorization confirmation for their order number amount and the totals. So again, uh, as, as you can see, a very simple, straightforward operation, allowing your customers themselves to enter in credit card information if uh, so desired. All right, uh, continuing on with other capabilities, we just saw how simple it is to enter a sales order, uh, authorize funds in multiple ways, either with a credit card on file, or entering the, the card information yourselves, your salesperson, your CSR, more traditional way uh, while you have that customer on the phone. Or again, if you desire having our uh, authorization by message, which would allow you to send either a email or a text message uh, to your customer and they would enter that credit card information themselves and, and so that the order can continue along uh, in the process. Now let's look at another uh, capability that we have. I'm now gonna go ahead and enter a sales order, but this time we're going to authorize funds on a credit card uh, using what's called a payment terminal. So for this uh, capability, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, ask one of my colleagues to share uh, their screen and that, that we can be viewing the payment terminal as part of this. You should be seeing that 
um, under uh, the user Ronnie Gamboa, hopefully. Uh, hopefully everyone's seeing that. There should be a, a, a he's sharing the payment terminal that is integrated uh, with uh, the, the sales order entry application that I'm currently uh, using as part of this demonstration. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter the sales order header information. I'm gonna go ahead and enter in the products uh, that are uh, uh, desired by the customer as part of this sales order. And again, when I click on either submit and enter new or submit and close, it will drive me to this same uh, application uh, that we see here. Um, and it's here that I can see the various uh, components of uh, uh, the, the order, uh, including uh, whether or not I'm going to be uh, processing or if there's sales tax or any freight as part of this order. Uh, note that one of the capabilities that I uh, highlighted earlier but really didn't talk about is, is this capability of freight that I just want to mention here. Uh, freight capabilities allow you to uplift the authorization or charge on a credit card. Uh, so later in your order process, if you have the actual freight or additional fees or repricing of your order uh, that is, occurs later in the process, this allows you to uplift the authorization for a certain amount to cover those additional costs. That way you're fully covered uh, for when you do the actual settlement or charging of the credit card later in the process. Uh, this is important. You may probably recognize this in certain industries like the restaurant industry. When you uh, go to pay your restaurant bill, uh, you get a credit card receipt back and you add tip normally on that bill and then you settle for the total. Uh, this is a similar here where we're uplifting the authorization waiting for additional charges or actual charges to be uh, entered as part of the order uh, later in the process, and then we settle for the actual amount. For this transaction, though, I'm going to go ahead and use this additional option that I have turned on and configured, which is charge with a terminal device. Uh, as soon as I take this option, it communicates out to the terminal device that you're seeing here currently uh, reflecting the amount the total, and then you as a user, uh, the customer would either tap the screen for con contact lists or enter their chip and pin uh, in, and that would go ahead and process the approval on the device. And then all I need to do is come back here on JD Edwards and click update info, which would return all of that transactional information back to, to JD Edwards and complete the process. So as you can see, very simple. We've integrated now physical payment terminal devices as part of the solution. You can now use JD Edwards applications or other applications that you may have that you desire to integrate in our payment terminal capabilities at maybe a counter operation or uh, sales uh, lanes where uh, customers walk through with products and you're wanting to use a payment terminal, a chip and pin payment terminal to process the payment and complete it within Edwards uh, and charge that credit card. So I can, as you can see, this not only allows you for credit card, but we've also extended this capability to allow for alternative payments such as Google Pay, Apple Pay, and other payment types to allow you to expand uh, the payment tender options that you want to uh, uh, um, uh, provide to your customer base. All right, so another quick example of how simple it is to uh, process a sales order within Edwards, fully integrated into a chip and pin device and um, uh, be able to charge that credit card as part of the sales order transaction. Now, as part of this process, I wanna explain a little bit of the rest of the flow real quick here. As you can see on my screen, I have a complete order flow, order to cash process that is, and with the typical steps that you find as part of this process, uh, you do your sales order entry, you do your pick slips, you do your shipment confirmation, and normally as part of shipment confirmation, uh, you may do some adjustments or you may put some things into back order, or you may add freight. Or, or, or delivery fees as part of it. Uh, all of that 
to then get to the point of actually charging the credit card or settling the funds or capturing the funds against that. Uh, this uh, allows you to then, once you have all of your actuals to run this report, normally in unattended nightly operations, to then settle those funds automatically and um, complete uh, the process. I did this earlier and I ran a settlement for another order just to show a, a sample of that. This is uh, the order that I uh, uh, was processing earlier today uh, for this customer. And here you can see the um, a sample of the settlement, uh, the order number that was processed, the customer, the amount settled against their last four digits of the credit card and the token ID uh, associated to the uh, authorization and settlement and, and the complete process. So this UBE allows you to easily uh, schedule it into your nightly operations and everything that you've now shipped and confirmed and you have the actual final charges on, you would our settlement report would pick that up and charge the credit card on the customer. But we take it even further in that uh, we uh, also will uh, take the order through. Obviously, once settled, you, you'll run uh, invoices, you'll run sales update uh, that posts all of your accounting. But we also provide a complete payment posting functionality. All of those payments that you've gathered, either credit card payments that you've now settled and captured, alternative payments that you may have processed, PayPal payments if you uh, offer PayPal or Google Pay, uh, or other types of payments that are supported with our solution, we have payment posting uh, uh, UBEs reports that pick up those payments and automatically apply them against your invoicing uh, invoices, clearing those invoices, and then providing you a full uh, reconciliation process to allow your users and your accounting folks to tick and tie every transaction that has been processed and charged to a customer, making sure that you're receiving all of the funds uh, uh, from uh, your uh, daily operations of uh, uh, charges and settlements. So as you can see, our solution takes it from end to end, giving you the ability uh, to upfront either authorize funds manually, authorize funds by uh, via an, a, a message, email, or text, or authorize funds with a payment terminal device against that order, and then taking it all the way through posting and reconciliation of those charges. All right, well, let's continue. We've seen a, a, a several very interesting things, but let's uh, talk a little bit now about after the fact. Well, what if I have invoiced, I have uh, sent out um, uh, shipments, I've invoiced uh, for uh, terms customers, and they have invoices that are sitting in AR. And now they want to pay off those invoices with uh, different means, either a credit card or ACH or other collection capabilities, such as alternative payments and others. Well, uh, we now have that capability fully integrated into our solution also, allowing you to do collections uh, via credit card, ACH, and other means uh, within our solution. This gives you the capability if a customer calls in to your accounting department or your, your treasury group and they wanna make a payment um, against open AR invoices, uh, you can go in to our application and easily uh, enter in uh, the customer that you're working with, whoever that is, uh, click on select invoices and find uh, the invoices that they desire to pay off, uh, whatever invoices uh, that may be, one or many uh, of those uh, invoices uh, throughout. And then obviously once I click close, it returns that, and it tells me the amount that's going to be charged as one lump sum and automatically spread against the various invoice lines that I am applying payment to. And as we saw with sales order processing, you have multiple ways to charge the credit card. You can charge your the customer's credit card if they have a card on file with you, again, that card being tokenized, 
and vaulted within the payment gateway and then the token stored locally within your JD Edwards. Or you can charge with a complete new card or we've even integrated if you have again store operations and you have your customers uh, coming in and maybe it's a contractor uh, to the counter operation and they want to clear off some AR invoices, uh, you can use this application there and actually charge their credit card through a payment terminal device and through our integration, charge that credit card and then automatically apply those payments uh, back to your AR. So this allows you a lot of flexibility here from a collections vehicle to identify specifically the invoices that customers desiring to pay and uh, selecting those and then obviously entering in or uh, 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 reading the chip and pin if you use a terminal device uh, for the payment uh, that the customer is desiring to make uh, and the credit card that they're desiring to use. So very simple, straightforward for your users, fully integrated um, into your JD Edwards. That way they're accustomed to the screens and to the uh, uh, capabilities that you have within JD Edwards. Uh, they can go ahead and click on apply, which validates the card, make sure that you come back with a tr successful transaction. And then I can return back to JD Edwards and click again, update info that returns all of the token information and uh, charge information back to JD Edwards. So I can save that in and apply that payment uh, against those specific invoices. So very simple to use, uh, as you can see, and this application allows you to manually, while having that customer on the phone, uh, be able to identify those open invoices and uh, uh, charge a credit card and clear them off. But what if your customer you know, wants to automate things a little more? What if they want to uh, have other, uh, um, you want to remind them of upcoming invoices that are due? Uh, well, we have capabilities around that also. We've extended our solution to help you with collections management. Here, we've set up a series of processes within Edwards uh, that you can then uh, send out emails re with reminding your customers uh, that invoices are coming due. And uh, then the, your customer will receive an invoice uh, requesting a payment on a specific order. So here they would go through, they would uh, uh, click on uh, the email that they've received. Uh, that email will look something uh, like this. Again, with your logo, your verbiage on it, letting them know how many invoices are coming due, the total, they would, through their phone, click on pay now or their desktop, and that'll drive them to the payment portal, which will give them a listing of those invoices that are now due. And they can then select the invoices to pay and walk through a payment process uh, to either apply uh, an ACH or PayPal or other alternative payments such as Google and Apple Pay uh, to be able to process that payment and clear off those AR invoices. So what have we done here? We've extended our solution to help you with collections. We've extended our solution uh, to be able to remind customers on a continuous basis uh, that invoices are coming due or are now past due and that collection is, is needed. And then they can go in themselves when ready and uh, walk through and make payment on those invoices and clearing off those invoices uh, within your JD Edwards. And then obviously uh, you would collect the funds and reconcile them through our payment reconciliation processes. So the user uh, here, the customer would enter their credit card information, knowing how much they, they, they're going to be charged. Uh, they can see that everything is verified and they can go ahead and process the, the actual charge and payment uh, against it. And if they need to, they can verify if they have any other outstanding uh, uh, invoices to be paid. In the meantime, once they've processed that payment, the customer will receive a um, invoice payment confirmation so that they know specifically that they've paid off some invoices. 
Um, it'll be obviously branded with your logo and colors and whatever uh, verbiage you want it uh, to appear here so that they have confirmation with a, a receipt payment on their side. So as you can see, very simple um, uh, uh, processes uh, that we've introduced that allow you to set up uh, and a reminder system and a, to, uh, um, to your customer base, and they can go in and confirm payment against those invoices. But we've taken our solution even a step further than that. We've also now introduced an auto pay system. Uh, the auto pay system allows your customers uh, to set up specific payment rules. And automatically, the system, our solution will charge uh, your customer, either their credit card, if that's what they set up in their payment rule, ACH, if that's what they set up in their payment rule, and automatically uh, uh, charge them on the appropriate date. So your customers will set up different payment rules that you've defined here based on your, your customer, um, the currencies that you're working in, and what is this rule based on? Uh, first, you're going to base the rule on a specific parameter, such as invoice due date, invoice date, or uh, if they want to pay on a specific day of the month. Maybe I want to pay all open invoices on the 15th and 30th of each month, or I want to pay weekly every Friday. I want to pay whatever open invoices that are due every Friday. So I set up my payment rule. I can also declare how many days in advance of that payment rule I want to set, uh, uh, make the payment. So in this case, this person's paying two days prior to uh, the invoice due date. And then they select, well, how do I want to make payment? Do I want to use a credit card that's on file? Uh, or do I want to do a bank transfer? Uh, to clear off those invoices? And is this rule forever? Is it uh, for a fixed amount or is there, or is there a limit? Uh, do I have an end date? So similar to what you probably do with your own internal personal banking solutions where you set up auto pay rules at, at your, for your cell phone or maybe your electrical bill, um, uh, you're doing that here. And this helps your customer and may entice them to maybe, uh, uh, if you give them some uh, uh, discounts on early payment, if they set up these rules uh, to automatically uh, process that payment and they can just set it and forget it. And it just will charge them on the days that they're supposed to be charged, either through an ACH transfer or through uh, a, um, a credit card uh, uh, charge. So, Again, extending our capabilities and giving you options and functionality to allow you to enhance your collections um, uh, uh, capabilities. This allows you to uh, go through and either manually apply payments and, and open AR or uh, set up a reminder system of invoices coming due, or again, set up payment rules uh, that will automatically trigger uh, payment processes uh, for your customers. We also talked a little bit about pay payment reconciliations and all the abilities there. And obviously we have all of the uh, uh, solutions in other areas. We do support returns. We support batch authorization and EDI processes. We have analysis uh, uh, reports that we uh, provide and uh, uh, through all of this, obviously configurations and other methods of processing uh, payments. So our solution, as you can see, gives you options. It gives you the ability to really tailor and configure the solution to your processes and needs, depending on what it is that uh, and how you want to use our solution. But we really extend this even further in that we want to provide your customer base an integrated payments portal an electronic invoice presentment and payment portal uh, that they can log in and manage all of this, manage their relationship with you, see invoice history, uh, see sales order history and other. So here, uh, you, you this would be branded again to your customer specifications, your logo colors and so on. Um, your customers would come to your payment portal. They would sign in with their credentials that they control and are linked 
uh, to your to their customer number internally within your JD Edwards, allowing them to do things like see their maybe their aging and account balance and total exposure, or maybe see invoice history um, that they have with you as far back as you want to allow them to go, or they can search on specific invoices, or they can drill into a specific invoice that um, maybe uh, they're they're looking to see more information on. This is real-time information coming out of your JD Edwards. This payment portal, the electronic invoice presentment and payment portal is linked real-time to your JD Edwards, pulling the information from your JD Edwards and presenting it to the, your end customer. This allows them to view all this online without having to call you, uh, be able to download invoices uh, physical invoices, print them off uh, if desired, see them online, make sure that everything is accurate, not only from an invoice history view, but also from a shopping history, from an order history view, allowing them to go in and see the details behind the order that they entered uh, and all of the information related uh, to that specific order, uh, what the uh, status of that order is, and what is the uh, actual information as to the order summaries or any other information that is uh, associated to this order, including how it was paid for. So real-time information at the fingertips of the customer so that they don't have to be calling in to ask for status on things, to ask for another copy of an invoice or uh, a, a certain document or, or what's happening with this order all of that at their fingertips through the electronic invoice presentment and payment portal. But the main purpose of this payment portal is payments. So this payment portal also allows your customers to manage all of their payment activity, open invoices, uh, scheduling of payments like we saw earlier, um, setting up auto pay rules or selecting open AR invoices that maybe are they desire now to pay and process a payment and clear off those invoices that maybe are now coming due. They can go through and um, review the invoices selected, and then they can select, depending on the different types of payment options that you offer, uh, to enter their payment information, either a credit card or ACH or PayPal or other alternative payments that we're now offering as part of this solution. So they themselves would then select those invoices that are, are due uh, on a real-time basis uh, and uh, enter in the credit card information uh, into the payment portal to clear off those invoices uh, that are now requiring payment. All of this integrated real time uh, with your JD Edwards. So they see up to date real time information at all times um, uh, and provide real time uh, feedback to your customers uh, and allowing them to self service themselves through all of the capabilities of payments, open in invoices, and so on. All right. So that was a glimpse at some of the capabilities that we have, obviously because of the uh, time, there's only so much that we can share at this moment. I hope that uh, this at least whets your appetite to want to see more. There's a lot more capabilities that we have that we didn't even touch on, um, such as uh, 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 invoice uh, uh, payments and alternative payments. We didn't really drive, dive into that and other capabilities. Uh, that we, we have. If there's interest, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing, uh, uh, please go ahead and uh, call, get back to us, and we can set up a more of a one-on-one -on -one presentation, understanding your needs, and really diving in to those capabilities. At this point, I'm going to stop uh, talking and sharing, and I'm going to pass the presentation back to Jerry for a, a few closing comments as we're uh, uh, coming to the end of the demonstration. Thank you, everyone on the call. Yeah, Diego, very much appreciate that. A very quick walkthrough of Smarter Commerce Payments. Hopefully, as the audience can see, there is a functionality in Smarter Commerce Payments to help address any kind of credit card or payments 
situation that your team organization finds itself in. Whether we're talking card not present transactions over the phone, uh, authorized by email, pay an invoice by email, log in to an e-payments portal, a card present transaction. I mean, the list can go on and on. And as Diego indicated, this is really a very, very brief demonstration of smarter commerce payments. Um, I, I've seen a few questions come in here uh, over the course of the session. Appreciate that. I understand that we're at the, the end mark for our time together. Uh, certainly, if anybody on the session has a hard stop, feel free to drop off. I'll stay on here just a couple minutes uh, answering everybody's questions via chat. Uh, the team here and myself have been addressing these questions one by one. The key here is that Smarter Commerce can help your organization streamline whatever payment situation uh, you find yourself in. Uh, additionally, we do this in a compliant fashion, and we do it in a fashion that's integrated with Shady Edwards. Diego also indicated if you do have any additional questions or you'd like to set up an actual complete demonstration of Smarter Commerce, you can go ahead and do that by emailing myself. Jerry Van Dalen, Diego Overmean at the emails that you see there on the screen. We'd be more than happy to set up a quick call for a complete demonstration of smart commerce payments. With that said, I'm going to go ahead and stop um, uh, stop the uh, stop the recording for today's session, and then I will stay on here for just a few more minutes in case there's any additional team would like to submit via chat. Uh, until then, we appreciate everyone's participation, and we hope that you have found today's session uh, helpful and useful and look forward to continuing the conversation at a later point in time. Take care, everybody. And again, I'll be on chat for a few minutes here, uh, hopefully making connections with anybody else that has questions.